Have you ever wondered what happens to all the stuff we throw away? Well, hold on to your hats because we are about to dwell in the wild world of circular economy. Restorative and regenerative by design, a circular economy aims to keep products, components and material at their highest utility and value at all times. A circular economy is a continuous cycle that preserves and enhances natural capital, optimizes resource yields and minimizes system risks by managing finite stocks and renewable flows. In business as usual, manufacturing takes raw materials from the environment and turns them into new products, which are then discarded into the environment. The typical take, make and waste approach. It's a linear process with a beginning and an end. In a circular economy, however, materials for a new product come from old products. As much as possible, everything is reused, remanufactured, or as a last resort, recycled back into a raw material or used as a source of energy. Hi, my name is Dr. Shruti Sharma, and today I'm going to talk about three principles of circular economy. The circular economy model arose from several major schools of thought that emerged in the 1970s and gained prominence in the 1990s. They include the performance economy of Walter Stahel, the cradle-to-cradle -cradle design philosophy of William McDonough and Michael Brunot, biomimicry as articulated by Janine, the industrial ecology of Reed Lifset and Thomas Grable, natural capitalism by Amory and Hunter Lovins. And Paul Hawken, of course, and finally the blue economy systems approach described by Gunther Pauli. Several aspects of circular economy are deeply ingrained in the habits of Indian people. We've been practicing circular economy in our day to day lives. The circular economy model rests on three principles. Each address several of the resource and system challenge that India faces today or might, face, or might face tomorrow. The first principle is preserve and enhance natural capital by controlling finite stocks and balancing renewable resource flow. A circular economy enhances natural capital by encouraging flows of nutrients within the system and creating the conditions for regeneration of soil and other living systems. Whenever possible, utility is provided virtually or as a service rather than as a physical product. When resources are needed, the circular system favors technologies and processes that use renewable or better performing resources. The circular economy seeks to address several challenges to natural capital, such as threatened stock and variable quality of fresh water. The Indian economy, especially the agriculture sector, relies heavily on fresh water. India has significant groundwater resources but faces pressing challenges including droughts, waterborne diseases and water contamination by sewage and agriculture runoff. Overall, 76 million people in India do not have access to safe water. The second challenge to this principle is soil degradation. The Indian economy relies heavily on agriculture. It provides 64% of total employment in rural areas and contributes 17.4% of GDP. Over half the land in India is arable. Soil degradation is a significant problem. It is estimated that 147 million hectares or 55% of the land used for biomass production is degraded. While some degradation is natural due to earthquakes and landslides, the major causes are human and include deforestation, overgrazing and urban sprawl. A decline in soil quality results in lower crop productivity, prompting farmers to make great use of fertilizer and in so doing reduce their profits. The third challenge to this principle is a loss of biodiversity. India is a very biodiverse country with 45,000 species of plants and 81,000 species of animals. The biodiversity underpins many ecosystem services that benefits human. India also contains two of the world's most threatened hotspots, the Eastern Himalayan region and the Western Ghats. 
at least 10% of India's wild flora and possibly more of its wild fauna are on the list of threatened species. The challenge, there's one more challenge of depletion of fish stocks and degradation of marine ecosystem. Now, as you know, India is a part of the group of large fish producing countries in the world. A number of factors including increased demand by local and global markets and various negative externalities increase pressure on India's fish stock. Today, 61% of the country's marine fish stocks are overexploited, while most of the remaining stocks are fully exploited, leaving little or no room for expansion. Now, that was about natural capital principle. The second principle is optimize resource yields by circulating products, components and materials at their highest utility at all times in both technical and biological cycles. Now, this entails designing for refurbishing, remanufacturing and recycling to keep products, components and materials circulating and contributing to the economy. Circular systems use tighter inner loops whenever possible to preserve energy and economic value. These systems also optimize the reuse of products and extend usage length. Now, sharing business model increase product utilization. Circular systems also maximize the value of biological materials by cascading them through different application and extracting biochemical feedstock before they re-enter the biosphere safely to regenerate valuable resources. Now, as in a linear system, increasing yields is useful and requires ongoing system improvements. But Unlike a linear system, a circular system would not compromise effectiveness, which requires a fine balance between efficiency and long-term resilience. The circular economy seeks to address several resource challenges. One of the first is material consumption. Now, India's material consumption per capita has been increasing slowly compared with other emerging economies like China. And it remains low by international standard if you compare it with the global north. If India maintains the economic development pace of the last few decades, it stands to more than triple its demand for resources by 2030, which can be a big challenge. Now, this one more challenge is nutrient loss. The deterioration of soil due to loss of nutrients is a significant trend in India. Now, annual losses amount to 0.8 million tons of nitrogen, 1.8 million tons of phosphorus and 26.3 million tons of potassium. Now, as a result of these losses, the amount of fertilizers applied to Indian fields have increased sharply. Now, last challenge in this second principle is waste of products and materials. Large amounts of unprocessed waste end up in open air dump sites, usually near urban areas posing major threat to human health and local environment. The principle three of circular economy is foster system effectiveness by revealing and designing out negative externalities. The negative externalities of economic activity include land degradation, air, water and noise pollution, release of toxic substances and GHG emission. These impacts are seldom reported or accounted for and their weight is borne by both ecosystems and society. A circular economy would reveal the cost of these externalities, in other words, outline their risk and potential economic impact. Now, furthermore, by including feedback that effectively integrates these costs, a circular system would gradually eliminate negative externalities. The circular economy seeks to address several systemic challenges. The first is noise pollution. Now, noise pollution is a, sig is a significant cause of concern in Indian cities. A study found out that major cities including Mumbai, Hyderabad and Delhi exceeded government noise limits due to noise from industry, transport and construction. Such high noise pollution has been linked with various health issues, especially cardiovascular disease. The second challenge to this principle is air pollution. Now, air pollution is a major issue in India. The health effects are especially significant, including respiratory and cardiovascular disease. According to World Health Organization, outdoor air pollution in India caused high deaths in the world after China. Now, transitioning to a circular business model may seem daunting, 
but it is a necessary step for sustainability. To become circular, companies must follow all these three principles diligently. They can use these steps for step one, conduct a circular economy assessment to understand the current practices and identify areas of improvement. Second, redesign products and services with durability in mind. Third, implement sustainable sourcing practices, prioritize recycled materials and reduce reliance on virgin resources. The fourth, collaborate with stakeholders including suppliers and customers to create closed loop system. And the last is invest in digital technologies that enable better resource management and circular process optimization. Now, in conclusion, the circular economy represents a transformative shift in our approach to resource management and sustainability. By prioritizing systems design, waste reduction, circular business processes and digital technologies, companies can not only reduce the environmental impact, but also unlock new economic opportunities. As we collectively embark on this journey, the road ahead is one of promise where environmental stewardship and economic prosperity go hand in hand in a truly sustainable future. Thank you.